Coffee is such a good afternoon treat, especially the decaf type in the afternoon. It can really keep you going. Anyway, enough with the sidetracking. Well, I just completed the Learn Python and Ethical Hacking from Scratch course on Station X taught by Zaid. Zaid is a course author who has published on Udemy, Station X, and various other websites and courses. I took away some great uh, different types of lessons, learned some different types of libraries and modules, and really I learned a good comprehensive overview of what it's like to address the Python side of security. With all this being said, there was one specific module I paid particular attention to. This module was called Writing a Keylogger. The reason why I chose to pay particular attention to this module was because Project 2 involved writing a keylogger by myself. Before I get into the video, one of the biggest issues that I just realized was, well, I could just copy all of the code that I wrote from Zaid's course, and then I really wouldn't really be learning. I could just copy it and say, look at I wrote a keylogger. One of the things that I'm doing about this project is actually trying to apply my learning and actually learn something, not just show the world that I was able to write a keylogger, for instance. I have come up with a method of attack behind how I'm going to write this keylogger. Let me go ahead and briefly explain. Okay, so I have come up with a cheat sheet. This is kind of the hints that I give myself for this project, and this is it. So, project two, writing a keylogger. We have the Learn Ethical Hacking and Python from Scratch and Zaid's Keylogger, aka the Z Logger. This is what he calls it in his course. All right, so these are the hints that I'm giving myself. First, I have two Python files. I have the Keylogger Python file and the execution. So we're going to import our Keylogger into the execution and execute the Keylogger in this Python uh, file. All right, so then we have the Python libraries used. I give myself this. So we have the subprocess, smtlib, re, re um, Pi input keyboard threading, and then we have our keylogger uh, module, which once again gets imported into the execution, and then we execute it from this Python file. We also have an email account that we have set up, uh, as Zaid had outlined in his keylogger. Uh, the keystrokes were sent every 120 seconds to a Gmail uh, address, and so I just created my own little email address, complete keylogger project at Gmail, with the password. Don't worry, this will be changed. Uh, make sure to use those password managers, and this will uh, this will be your random passwords. Anyway, so now it's up to you from here. So these are the hints that I have given myself for this keylogger. Now you may be wondering why even use his keylogger? Why create something very similar to his keylogger? And the only reason is because whoops, I almost just made my tripod fell fall fall. Fall. One of the biggest reasons why I'm using his keylogger is because he builds a backdoor program later within the course. Once again, it's all about this learning process, and so let's go ahead and get started with building this keylogger, um, starting with just setting up the basic profiles, uh, whatever, setting up the basic. Let's just get to the Python project course, the keylogger thing, and queue up the time lapse now. Drum keys on the beat. So one of the first steps that I always do when it comes to creating Python programs or scripts is just create the basic layout and understand the different types of Python libraries uh, that are utilized, as well as create the first few comments which kind of organize my document. So let me go ahead and show you exactly what I mean. Okay, so first we have the documentations uh, all pulled up on this left side of the browser. So. I have my threading documentation. I won't need the re realize, and I also won't need the sum process. So I have the SMTP threading and pi input. And then on the right side, I have basically I have anything that has to do with just the organization, creating my project here. So now it just comes down to reading the documentation and then implementing what I need within this code. <laughs> The next day, I did not finish the keylogger uh, the previous day, so I went ahead and just closed the programs and decided to actually tackle this just a little bit differently. So let me go ahead and transition to my computer to show you what I exactly mean. So as you know, uh, 
I'm building a keylogger program. The basis behind this is we're going to have three different things. First, the keylogger is going to send us an email. We have to initialize and actually create the keylogger. And then, of course, we have to send emails to ourselves. So starting with, uh, basically, this is just a keylogger program. This is where I'm going to actually compile my whole keylogger together. But right now, what I really want to show you is I decided to actually go ahead and tackle this by uh, creating three different modules. And within the three different modules, I have the email functionality, which will send us the email. We have the keylogger, which is initializes and creates the keylogger. And then, of course, we have the threading, which will send a timer of three minutes, uh, sending an email every three minutes uh, with the keystrokes logged to our uh, basic email or the, the email that we set up for this, this particular project. That is seriously how I tackled the problem. So now the next step is to compile all three together. And after I get that, test some functionality. I have finished the keylogger program. I ended up putting the three files together and I'm gonna quickly break down how this keylogger works. So let's go ahead and transition over to my computer. So first off on the very left, we have uh, basically our test email, which was complete uh, keylogger project at gmail.com. Uh, and then on the right screen, we have our Kali machine with uh, five different files, but really two of them are the key importance. Uh, we have keylogger.py, and then we have our execute keylogger, which is also uh, an important one for us. These three, send mail, keylog, thread, those are just all of the ones that I kind of created, those simple little program. Create this keylogger class um, quickly, but once again, just kind of break what's going on. So first off, we have our init function. We always have to have that when we're creating a class. And then we have a log uh, method. We have the keylogger itself. We have our mail method. And we have our report method and then we start the keylogger. Once again, uh, code will be in the description below so you don't necessarily uh, have to see me or listen to me talk all the time anyway. So we get to our execute keylogger where we set our time to 10 seconds, we have our uh, Gmail, we have our password, and then we start the keylogger. We must start the, uh, the machine, so let's go ahead and just do Python execute. Alrighty, we should be running up and running. And as you can see on the left screen right there, we have our keylogger has started message. And let's say we want to go to um, grant uh, hi hi and password is ASDF. And we log in. <clears throat> we can see that, well, first off, we have somebody who is actually here. But anyway, um, if we look back at the emails that we're going to get, you will see that we will have our keystrokes being sent through our email. So as you could tell from this basic keylogger I just wrote, uh, it's pretty simple to write a keylogger in Python. This keylogger has some limitations. First off, as you could tell, what I was just outlining right there, it's going to continually send emails to this email, which is completely fine, but if it's configured every 10 seconds, it's going to completely spam your email with all these blank emails, and it's really not very organized. One of the other things that I've found from this uh, keylogger that I just wrote is that there's really no context within those emails. Like, for instance, we can put in hi, 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 or grant at Cyber Intern Academy, but do we have any idea where that is being entered? For instance, on Facebook or on social media, bank account, right? If you're trying to be a malicious hacker. Another limitation that I have found is that this keylogger has to be already on the local machine, meaning that you have to have access to the local machine. Project three, building a Trojan. The big thing that I'm gonna have to be able to do is first build off a little tiny game, right? And then implement what I have just wrote with this keylogger to this game. That is it for project two of the complete Python for cybersecurity uh, project. Uh, once again, very quick, I had some guidance. I had uh, a overall idea about how I wanted to do this. If you have found this useful, please consider subscribing. I will see you in level three.